This is how I made and animated this Polaroid effect. So we're going to start off by selecting the picture you're going to use for your Polaroid. And if you want to take that from a video like this, so let's say I wanted this to be the picture, just select the clip, right click, and then select change clip speed, and then just hit freeze frame there, hit change, and then delete the access that this is the stuff that we don't want. So now if we play it, this is a freeze frame, the picture doesn't move as you can see. We're going to compound clip this, that's the prep done for our Polaroid. We don't need this in the timeline anymore, so we're just going to delete this. And we're going to make this effect inside of a fusion clip. Let's go ahead and open this in the fusion page. We're going to build this effect on a background layer, so we're going to pull this background layer here and attach it to our media out and create a pipe router just to make it nice and tidy we're going to select our background node and change the alpha all the way to zero so we can see we're going to grab another background node here and this is going to be our actual polaroid select the background and change it to white then we're going to crop it with a rectangle here and then just shape this into somewhat of a polaroid shape i think that's good for me i'm going to then go into our media pool and then select that compound clip that we originally made we're going to crop this by selecting another rectangle and then just cropping it however you would like so for me i think this looks good and then i'm just going to add a transform here so i can see center it more and just bring it up a little bit. So once we have our general shape like this, let's make the bend in the corner. So we're just going to deselect this and it disappears from the viewer. And we're just going to add an image plane and then hit shift space and type in transform and then select the 3D transform. Connect the image plane to the transform. Hit shift space again and we're going to add another transform. We're going to add a merge by just going up here into the tab and then we're going to add a render which just renders everything out. We're going to hit the viewer icon here so we can have two viewers and we can view this in 3D space. So we're going to select this merge here and then drag it into our viewer. And now by holding alt and your middle mouse wheel, we can then move this around and, you know, rotate and do whatever we want to do. So to create the actual bend, we're going to hit transform and then go to our Z rotation and then change this to 44.5, which rotates it like this. And then we're going to go to another transform. And now we're going to do minus 44.5, which then, and brings it back to normal. In between these two transforms here, we're going to hit shift space and type in bend, which brings out the bender node. In our bender here, we're going to go to amount and then just change that to two. On the axis, we're going to select X. We're going to change this angle here to 90 and then bring the center all the way down to one. And then by changing the slider here on the minimum and maximum, we actually then control the bend. So as you can see here in the 3D space, using the bender node, we've created the bend fold. And by just moving the slider here, we can choose and select how much much of a bend we want on this Polaroid. And then to make this bigger, we're just going to select one of the transforms. I was just going to select this one here and then going into our translation and then just upping the scale on the Z. Now, once we have something like this, this next step is optional, but I'm going to show you how to add lighting to make your scene a lot better. So to actually enable shadow and lighting, we're going to go to our render here. We're going to change this here to hardware renderer, which is just the best render settings. Hit enable lighting and shadows, which will then just make our Polaroid all black because we don't have any lighting in our scene yet. And at this point here is where I just usually add two point lights, one behind and then one in front. And then I just play around with the intensity and positioning to see which one matches the scene better. If you want to know the ins and outs on how I made this viral edit, which got over a million views on TikTok, click this video here, which also comes with the free project file. If you found this video helpful, hit the subscribe button and follow me on TikTok.